uh, thanks for the introduction. I'm going to talk about simple password hardened encryption services. This is a joint work with uh, Christoph Egger, Manuel Reinert, Sherman Chow, Matteo Raffae, Maffei and uh, Dominic Schroeder. So what's password hardened encryption, you ask? Uh, so basically what it does is, so it is a one package solution for data security. And what it does is to protect sensitive client data, which is stored in a server with uh, password or biometric two-factor authentication, even if the, pass the, the server is completely compromised. So of course, without any external help, it, this is impossible. Therefore, we need some minimal help from an external party called the rate limiter. So in more details, uh, password hardened encryption or PHE provides this list of security features. Against, the, against a compromised server, we completely eliminate offline attacks such as dictionary, offline dictionary attacks. And it also rate limits online attacks such as uh, password guessing attacks. And against this uh, external rate limiter, we achieve obliviousness, which means the rate limiter learns nothing about the password and data. And we also achieve soundness, which means the rate limiter cannot cheat by, uh, for example, convincing the server that the password is correct, but indeed it's not. And on top of all this, we achieve key rotation or we support key rotation, which is actually required in the payment card industry data security standard if you want to store credit cards on your website, for example. And in terms of practicality, our system is simple and easy to implement. And it's very easy to convert from existing password, uh, hashed password system into this new system. And we support currently 250 logins per call per second. I will go talk more about this later. Uh, so I hope this uh, is enough to uh, get you excited. So let me get into the technical details. So this line of work uh, is motivated by this typical scenario where you have a client Alice with an incredibly weak password and a server which stores a profile for Alice which consists of a hash, a sorted hash, the salt, and maybe some top secret data. Okay, so to retrieve such a data, Alice will say, hi, I'm Alice, and this is my password. So the server will check whether the provided password matches with the sorted hash, and if so, it returns the top secret data. So obviously, this is not very good because the data is stored in plain text. So, okay, obvious countermeasure would be we store the data in encrypted form. So the server will check whether the hash is correct. And if so, it decrypts the cipher text and returns the data. But still, this is arguably not a very good solution because first of all, if an attacker steals the sorted hash database, it can perform uh, offline dictionary attacks and recover the passwords and use it to uh, log in on behalf of the client. Or even worse, if we are talking about insider threats, so maybe the attacker gets hold of uh, the server secret key, then it can just decrypt the data directly, right? So here I summarize the two ways of obtaining the client data. And previous work uh, focused on protecting the uh, sorted hash part using a notion called password hardening, which was actually in, uh, introduced by Facebook. And later in Usenext 15, uh, people uh, formalized the idea and gave a quite efficient scheme called PIVIA. And there are some improvement in C616. And last year we proposed a scheme uh, called Phoenix, which is very efficient, but still it's just focused in the, on the password or sorted hash part. So this year we uh, take care of the other part as well. So if, uh, even if the server secret key is learned, uh, the attacker cannot decrypt the data. So here is how we do it. We take the scheme from last year, Phoenix. We simplify it so that it's even more efficient. And then we upgrade it with the encryption functionality and also provide a stronger soundness guarantee. So uh, let me start by explaining the simplified Phoenix scheme. And to do so, I need a important, an important ingredient called 
key homomorphic pseudo-random function or PRF. So let G be a group of prime order where uh, decisional Diffie-Hellman is hard and H be a random oracle. It's well known that hash of message to the key is a pseudo-random function under the DTH assumption. And what's nice about this function is that it's key homomorphic. Therefore, uh, we can support key rotation from it. So with this in mind, we describe the simplified Phoenix scheme. Uh, to register, Alice still provides her username, Alice, and the password, so nothing's changed here. But in the back end, the server does something more. So like before, it samples a, a sort, but now it also informs this third party rate limiter that uh, someone wants to register. And this rate limiter then computes a PRF on uh, a, a random sort and returns this PRF value to the server. Then the server will compute another PRF on its own sort and the password and multiply it with the PRF value of the rate limiter and then store this product as the hash. So to log in, as before, the client still provides only the username and password, but the server does something more, obviously. And so it first removes its own PRF value from the product and send the other half of the product to the rate limiter. So note that if the password is correct, then this other half would be a valid PRF value uh, of the rate limiter, right? So the rate limiter will check exactly this, and if it's indeed correct, then it will uh, say, okay, it's correct, and here is a proof that it's correct, and if it's incorrect, then it say the otherwise, right? So, and if the server is convinced that the proof is valid, then it will uh, allow the client to log in. So key rotation is supported almost natively, in the sense that the server and rate limiter with secret key SKS and SKR can rotate a key into alpha times SKS and alpha times SKR plus beta, where alpha and beta are random values. And after doing so, the server can rotate all the stored hash values in this database without bothering the rate limiter anymore. So in order to upgrade this to a password hardened encryption scheme, let's take a closer look of uh, what this rate limiter does. So it actually performs two very simple functionality. First is the quality check functionality, namely that it checks whether the pseudo-random function values are uh, equal. And it also checks if this sort requested by the server appears too frequently, too frequently, and if so, it rate limits the login request. So in order to upgrade this to a PHE, we change this equality check functionality into a slightly more complicated one. Namely, we ch the rate limiter will check whether the PRF value are consistent, and if so, it performs some kind of partial decryption. So this is concretely how we do it. Uh, so now to register, the client additionally provides some top secret data to be stored in the server. And now, in, uh, apart from sampling the sort, the server will also sample a symmetric key, let's say an AES key. And it also asks, uh, inform the rate limiter that someone wants to register. But now the rate limiter performs this uh, PIF evaluation twice. So it, it sends back Y0 and Y1 to the server. And again, the server does this uh, its own PIF com computation twice to obtain two products, H0 and H1. But here we use H1 to uh, further uh, one-time pad this uh, AES key. And finally, it uses the AES key to encrypt the top secret data. So to retrieve such a data, we do it in reverse. The server will remove uh, the, its part of the PIF values and send the other half, so the other half of uh, H0 called Y0 to the rate limiter, and the rate limiter will check whether this is a valid P, uh, PRF value, and if so, it returns the other half, Y1, to the server, of course, with a proof, and now the server can recover the secret key K and decrypt the cyber text. So to recap all the security features against the compromised server, 
we eliminate all offline attacks because the password hashes are masked by uh, rate limiters PIF values, and therefore a compromised server must communicate, still must communicate with the rate limiter to uh, test if a password is correct. And also, uh, we can rate limit online attacks because the rate limiter will check whether a sort appears too many times. On the other hand, against the rate limiter, we achieve obliviousness, which means that the uh, rate limiter learns nothing about the password and data. This is trivial because uh, the messages sent from the server to the rate limiter basically are independent of the passwords and data. And we also achieve soundness because the rate limiter must prove all the responses uh, that it, it returns are correct. We also achieve proactive security by key rotation. Key rotation can be done either periodically or when you suspect that the party is compromised. And this is also not very difficult by uh, using a key homomorphic PRF, which I just introduced. So we implemented this protocol uh, in these settings, and we found that it's uh, quite efficient. It's four times as efficient as PDR and 1.5 times as efficient as Phoenix. And note that these two schemes are just password hardening scheme without encryption. So even with encryption, we are faster than these schemes. And in terms of scalability, as you can see, the throughput of the server and the rate limiter scales almost linearly. So uh, we expect that it works well in large scale system as well. So to conclude, I uh, introduce you password card and encryption services. And actually, we are working on uh, removing all public key crypto from the system and just use symmetric key crypto. And if that works, that will be, conservatively speaking, 1,000 times faster. And it might even be able to support uh, large companies like Google or so. so Thank you for your attention, and I will take any questions. Okay. Thank you. So I guess uh, it's not clear to me what happens if I say the user needs to change uh, his password. So uh, what? Then basically, then basically you just uh, treat it as if it's a new registration. So you delete the old account, and uh, okay, but all the data I still want to re preserve, right? So yeah, so when you want to change your password, the client will provide its old password uh -huh. and a new password, right? So you use the old password to decrypt and encrypt with the new password. Okay. Yeah. So, hi, Stefan Sereo from Microsoft Research. I, I was just um, have some clarifying questions with respect sort of with the practical systems aspects of this. So to scale it up, presumably we're going to have more than one server. Right. Okay? And are we... How many rate limiters are we going to have with a cluster of servers? One so, or many? So, yeah. So, currently, we consider uh, one server working with one rate limiter. Of course, you can replicate this system many right, times. Right. But uh, in the future, we, are, we will also consider uh, one server working with multiple rate limiters. So, some kind of threshold setting. Okay, so but when when I have multiple when I have multiple rate limiters, the rate limiting policies then I, right there's, I have there's to express a, like it, they become sort of more complicated for me. Yeah, so that's a complicated question that we are going to answer. Cool work. Thanks. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you.